All right. Our loop is complete. It's your lucky day because Magic Spoon is here and it's just like your favorite childhood cereals but with zero sugar. In this cereal, there is 13 to 14 grams of protein and only 140 calories. Magic Spoon cereals are gluten-free, grain-free, GMO-free, and soy-free. They are also keto-friendly. Magic Spoon has four different flavors, frosted, fruity, cocoa, and peanut butter. And our personal favorite is mixing cocoa and peanut butter together. I'll just take one. No, no, here. No, don't take my cereal. We've been loving eating a Magic Spoon cereal as a snack and also for breakfast. Magic Spoon is backed by a 100% happiness guarantee, so if you don't like it for any reason, you can get your money back. So just click the link below in the description and use code TULA for $5 off your order with Magic Spoon. What flavor will you be trying? Thank you, Magic Spoon, so much for sponsoring this video. And thank you, Magic Spoon, for making an amazing tasting cereal with no sugar. Dragged all the way from here to there. That's the aftermath of last night's thunderstorms. That was a long, wet, hot night. It's over for now. There's more coming in a little bit, but we're gonna go take Jetty on the move again. with our offshore lures and Billy's a genius and just figured out if we wrap it around the winch the right way if there's a fish on it it will click and let us know we just had a bite and then he disappeared but the clicking worked I think we got a fish. What do you think it is? No, I didn't see it done. It's kind of doubtful it's black. I think it's a black fin or a bonita. Oh, it's a black fin. It's just skipping on the surface. We're going like seven knots boat speed right now. Sierra turned off the wind a little more. It's slowed down. Whoa. Black fin? Yeah, get it up. For sure, get it. Woo! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Got a nice little black fin tuna on the hand line. Can't believe that. That's the second fish we caught trolling on here. All right, we already got a fish on the boat for dinner. Today started out to be a little bit of a slow day as we headed out from Key Biscayne. Turned out to be really nice. Wind stayed out of the southwest and then started shifting out of the west. So we have offshore conditions right now. So it's pretty calm out here. And we're just in the Gulf Stream like 
what, two or three miles off land, just cruising up the coast. We have like a three knot current in the Gulf Stream right now, so our boat speed's only eight, nine knots. We have the mainsail reef, just the jib out, but we're going 11, 12 knots. 15.5 top speed. Great, we're getting up there, we're surfing some of these southerly swells. Super successful day. We're trying to decide if we're gonna stop at Lake Boca, where we've stopped a bunch of times before, or maybe keep on heading up north because it's turning out that it's not gonna be such great conditions for sailing up the coast tomorrow. Just light winds out of the north, which is the direction we're heading. It's just supposed to be increased today, like 15 to 25 knot winds out of the west. We wanna make sure that there's no thunderstorms that are gonna pop up. We'll make the decision here soon as we approach Lake Boca and see if we're gonna keep on going or head on in 14 miles away. Seven years now on this boat and we all know where we belong, just wait. Decided we're just gonna stop here at Boca. It's uh, it's already four o'clock. Getting late. I mean, we have a few hours daylight still, but call it a super successful sail up the coast. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna pull the jib in here, and then we'll pull the main and head on through the inlet. Average speed was 10 knots. Max speed was 16.1. Woo! Comment if this is one of your boats. Okay, folks, I think this is what success looks like. Arriving to your destination, or destination for the day, before calculated, and arriving with dinner. Billy has so kindly volunteered to fillet the fish. In case you were wondering, black fin tuna have no size limit, but they just put in a new order in, uh, I think like two years ago, that you can only get two per person per day or 10 per vessel, whichever is greater. Mm -hmm. piece good girl you love tuna huh? huh pretty good I'm gonna put them in the bucket so we'll throw them out in the ocean not in this enclosed body of water here we have some raw tuna but I also sauteed some or, or seared some just super super quick in some sesame sesame oil so the middle's still raw. The outside's warmed up a bit, and we're dipping it in soy sauce. And that is our appetizer. Mmm. Wow. That's amazing. And this table is down into a bed because, like I said last night, it was super nasty, super rainy, super hot, and... <sighs> We felt like an old grandparent couple where we slept in separate bedrooms. <laughs> Billy ditched me in the middle of the night. Slept had up to. here. <laughs> had to. It was so hot we had to close all the hatches because it was raining. She yeah. really wants them. What? You had more than we did already. Okay, today we had a max speed of 16.1. We went a total of 45.7 nautical miles, and it took us four hours and 40 minutes. 
I would say that was a pretty successful sale, but we are exhausted, we're hungry, we're gonna go walk Jetty and get some dinner and go to bed. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so and share one of our videos with someone you love. Okay, new day. We are going from Boca to maybe West Palm or Jupiter or Stewart, one of those three. And our goal today is catch a mahi. So Billy's gonna wear some mahi shorts to be lucky. <laughs> Good morning. Roger that, Boca Inlet Bridge uh, coming up now. One of the reasons we love this anchorage is because it's so close to the inlet. You go under one bridge, it's right here, it's calm. On the weekends, I'm sure it's super crowded. There's a little ramp that we could go walk jetty. There's a couple restaurants you can go to and everything's super close and you don't have to go like miles up the intercoastal in order to find a good place to anchor. You guys might have seen not too long ago, our friends Delos and Calico Skies were anchored right in here. We actually met up with them before the Lauderdale race to grab the piece of safety equipment. Um, we're headed out the inlet now. It's calling for kind of 10 to 15 knot light offshore winds all day. So hopefully we have some beam reach sailing all the way up the coast. We'll try to get out two or three miles into the Gulf Stream and get that lift really helping us along yesterday. Hopefully that forecast is true and it holds and we'll have some beautiful sailing. No matter how calm it is, these have to be closed. Folks, we are back at it today with our yo-yo hand line. Costs like five dollars, and then we have quite a bit of braid that we actually got from Bowen Brandy. Three feet maybe of leader, and then we're gonna go through our offshore bag. What do you think they're gonna want to eat today? Yesterday our green guy was lucky, so I usually have better luck with green and yellow, so I'm gonna go with him again today. I have a swivel on the leader attached to the yo-yo and then our lure has a leader with a snap on it and we're just going to snap it right on our swivel. Again, for our yo-yo, we have it wrapped around the winch so if we do get a fish on, it clicks, this turns, and we know we got something. Packing is so anticlimactic. We might be getting some storms. So somehow when we weren't paying attention, I don't know how it happened because it didn't click, but all of our line disappeared. This was empty. There's a lot of like little chunks of seaweed out and it keeps getting caught. So we're just gonna bring it in. No mahi today, but that's okay. We caught a fish yesterday, which was very impressive to me. <laughs> we're just gonna go into Palm Beach because we got the wind shifted more north than it's forecasted. So it's basically right on our nose. We're kind of just tacking up into it in the Gulf Stream here, which honestly our tacking angles are really good in the Gulf Stream because <laughs> it's just pushing us north right into that wind. So we're just gonna go to the Palm Beach Inlet. We're gonna just motor up the last few miles and to uh, finish up our Florida loop.
around the 100 foot mark or so off of Palm Beach here. And we're only, what, one or two miles offshore? But you can see, like, a, I don't know if you can see a bunch of eddies in the water, a little turbulence, like there's one, and you can see it pretty clear. And then the other day, when it was breezy, you can actually see a distinct line of where it was more choppy and where it was less choppy. Some signs at the Gulf Stream. We're at the very western edge of the Gulf Stream, and we'll also see our speed drop because we've been getting about a three knot push from the Gulf Stream, but now as we head inshore, we will not see that speed gain. Like right now, we're only doing two knots of boat speed because Sierra turned the engine the engine down, 1.8 knots with the paddle wheel. And we're doing four point four and a half knots over ground, so we have like a two and a half knot current still right on the edge of the Gulf Stream. But we'll lose all of that as we head in towards the inlet. Our loop is complete. Almost. <laughs> After over 600 miles, two months, one blown sail, and one unwanted hitchhiker. There's a snake in the boat. <laughs> There's a snake in the boat. We've officially completed the Florida Loop. We left Stewart, Florida and headed west, excited to get back to cruising and see what life aboard a small 28-foot trimaran was going to be like. We crossed Lake Okeechobee. navigated the locks, and took in all the unique wildlife and characters along the way. You hold your hand and give you kisses. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> you just know how to work them, don't you? We went to Sarasota for Corsair Nationals, where we really learned how to race these Corsair trimarans. Even Sierra had a fun time. Nice They're gonna make me do this. <laughs> we have to finish. We took in the calm waters of the Gulf and explored everything the west coast of Florida has to offer, from Marco Island to the Everglades. We even beached the boat for the first time and had an amazing bonfire right on the beach. Literally, this is like the best thing in the entire world. Then we sailed toward more familiar waters and some of our favorite spots in the Dry Tortugas, the Keys. We fished, we swam, we kited the whole way. We couldn't have asked for a better way to say goodbye to our time on the Corsair 880. She's been good to us, but we're excited to see what comes next. And that's all she wrote, folks. We have just officially completed the Florida Loop. The uh, loop that you'll read about online, it says it's about 550 miles, but we actually went out to the Dry Tortugas, so I think we probably did around 600 something miles. Yeah, probably, yep. I mean, more, we really sailed a lot yeah. more, but um, yeah, about, about 600 and something. And we didn't stop at all of the places the articles online kind of tell you to stop because some of them we've been there before, some of them we just had different interests, but the trip was amazing. Who do you recommend to do it? Anyone who wants to see what this part of Florida is all about. It's so different. Like you go through the Okeechobee Waterway, which is super unique and different. You go through the West Coast, which impressed us with all the cruising and cool spots around there. And then obviously, the Florida Keys are amazing and the Dry Tortugas and all of that whole area for their own reasons. And then you go up the East Coast of Florida and we've done the East Coast of Florida a ton and you see the same old yachts and fancy houses and stuff like that. But if you've never done it before, definitely cool to check out. And, and if you have time and the budget to kind of go ashore and have some dinners here and there, there's some, some good stuff. But on the East Coast, you also have the blue water and good fishing in the Gulf Stream. Absolutely, and you get that ride up the Gulf Stream, which we've gotten for the past three or four days now. Yeah, so I really, you could do the loop either way, but I'm glad we did it the way we did it because that Gulf Stream on the way back was super helpful. Yeah, it helped a lot. It yeah. pushed us like an extra three miles. Like we were going three, pretty slow. Three knots. Yeah, three knots. We were going pretty slow today, but it didn't matter. Like we were only sailing at five knots and we could have put a screecher out and the, but we were just ready to be back and content sailing slow because with the Gulf Stream we're doing eight nine knots and if you are an East Coaster like us I highly recommend the West Coast cruising sailing over there it was beautiful it 
highly surpassed our expectations and it was amazing. We wish we could have spent more time there and that is my one suggestion for anybody who plans on doing the Florida Loop is do not put yourself on a schedule. Take your good old sweet time and stop all the time. Go for a little bit in, in, during the day and then stop and hang give out and give explore her, for a couple days. Just give yourself like two months. Yeah. Or more. Yeah, not even. Don't put a don't put a Three time months. cap on it. Why not? <laughs> uh, because you could literally spend an entire month and a half just doing the West Coast. Yeah, Sarasota two down. Like there's don't give yourself a time period. That is one my one piece of advice. Do you give any advice? If you go through the Okeechobee Waterway, you the the lowest bridge is forty eight or forty nine feet, the railroad bridge. And and I think some uh wires or something so if you have a mon hole you can be a little taller than that and there's a service that tilts you over to get you under that but you're pushing it and and if you're a multi-hole and you can't take your mask down then you can't can't go under there so 49 foot i believe is the limit no seam netting for every hatch in your boat no matter how big or how small and bring an extra fan than you think you need and plenty of shade as well yeah we're not gonna bore you with taking the boat out of the water again because you've seen it before, but the next time we see you, we will be on the road. I got a lot of stinky laundry to go do. <laughs> we'll see you guys on the road next time. Thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do so. And if you enjoyed, go watch another tool video because why not?